What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of our Montreal Canadiens franchise mode series on NHL 22. In this episode, we will be going through the 2031-2032 season, meaning after this we have just two seasons left with the Habs. It's been such a fun time. We're still hoping to add one last Stanley Cup to our name with the Canadiens. We have one. Would have liked to have more, but considering how the team was, I think we did pretty well. I'm happy with how this franchise series has gone. I'm really excited to get into the new season, and I hope you are too. As always, if you enjoy the video, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. The support helps me out a ton. And by the way guys, we're almost at 200 subscribers, that's absolutely awesome considering just a few months ago I was at 27 subscribers when I decided to start these franchise mode series. So. Thank you all so much for the support. I'm really glad you're enjoying these videos. I will absolutely be continuing these series in NHL 23. So let's jump right into the new season, guys. The 2031-2032 season. Enjoy. All right, so as always, to start the new season, headed into the 2031-32 year, we're going to go over our lines. Um, honestly, our team looks really solid this year. Um, I, I do wish the chemistry was a little bit better, but overall, our top six it's honestly just so good um i was wondering about like putting denisenko there maybe um i think i'll probably roll with that and have holmstrom there on the third line um bottom six also looks so good connect me down there uh anderson dolan and amarov um on the fourth line looks really good on defense again i'm not sure why it's a minus one so they both have x factors um or i mean sorry your check has the x factors there broberg's really good um, so hopefully their chemistry works itself out. Second line looks so solid there. And then our third pairing, also really good. Special teams look solid, plus three, and even correlation on the four man. Plus five and plus one on the two power play units. First power play unit, super stacked. Um, penalty kill looks good, plus two, and even correlation there. And three man PK, even correlations on both of the units. Looking really good. Goalies here. Porter is going to be our starter. He's 82 overall, 26 years old. Arms and backing him up at an 81 overall. So should be probably splitting starts for the most part. Um, and Armsden will probably get more uh, since he's grown pretty well. So honestly not too worried about goaltending as much this season. Should be okay. Take a look at our AHL team there. Rupert here starting with Bellinger backing him up. Starting out here, we got some of our rookies. Kulikov here is 19 years old, 76 overall. Could make the team if it gets to like 80 plus. Uh, they get plus two on this top unit here. Looking really good. And overall, our AHL team looks pretty solid. To Brian in there, if he can get to an 80 plus, he has a good shot at making the NHL team next season as well. Only 20 years old. So overall, I like the way our team looks. And just want to go over our contract situation here real quick um after this year we have just two more seasons so we will have caulfield for the remainder of the franchise series we'll have lundell and jaeger coming up next year howard there will have him through the end of this franchise series so we have a lot of big contracts to work out for the final season unfortunately but um this year we're pretty set for the next couple seasons so all our big shot guys caulfield lundell jaeger howard and broberg in there for at least the next two years so Good stuff on the contract management there. Headed into the closing seasons of this franchise series. And then we're obviously we're going to get into the simulation right here. Sim out to January 1st, 2032 and see how we do then. All right, so head into the new year, January 1st, 2032. We currently have a record of 18, 15, and 2. Honestly, I was expecting us to do a little bit better than this. Um, but what can you do? Jaeger there over point per game, though. He's still tearing it up, 41 points in 35 games. Uh, we sit fourth in the Atlantic with 38 points. Um, two spots ahead of the Sabres for that first wildcard spot. One point ahead of the Devils on that other wildcard spot. So we also need to start picking it up here, headed out into the second half of the year. Um, our HL teams are doing really well, 22, 8, and 5. Um, as you can see there, first in the north with 49 points, uh, actually leading the AHL now. So that's good to see. Um, but hopefully we can find some more consistency. We've really like just gone alternating wins and losses for so long. Um, so hopefully we can pick it up headed into the trade deadline and we will pick back up then and see if we want to make any moves. 
Alright, so at the trade deadline, we have a 30, 26, and 6 still squeaking into that wild card spot. As you can see, the Devils ahead of us now, 71 points. So we're 6 points ahead of the Capitals and 6 points ahead of the Panthers. So, you know, honestly, not that much wiggle room. We're pretty long way off from third place, but the Atlantic Division is so stacked there up at the top. So we really need to step it up after the trade deadline here. Um, you know, could be the first year since we started the rebuild that we are potentially not going to make the playoffs there. Yeager's still over point per game, though, 64 points in 62 games. HL team's killing it, 40, 16, and 6. Um, so we're going to head to trade deadline here, uh, see if we can make any moves um, and make something happen. All right, guys, so here I'm going to try and make an offer to Boston, trying to get Jeremy Swayman in exchange for Porter Holmstrom and a fourth round um, in 2033. Uh, Swayman here is getting older, but he's still an 89 overall, 33 years old. Our goaltending has really been our weak spot this year. Um, would be great if we can get him. So let's send this in and see what they say. And reject it. So let's see. Is their offer is insufficient? Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll add a third, see what we can do. All right, so rather than Holmstrom, I added Struble here two more years. Top 4D, 30 years old. He's pretty good. Uh, hopefully, they say yes to this. Uh, our values on our side for sure by a little bit. And still reject it. Okay, Boston. I don't know. Maybe we'll add in that fourth round pick. Um, definitely like overpaying here now. And still reject it. Boston is playing horrible. I honestly don't know what to do to sweeten this deal, guys. Um, we're going to try something, though. Alright guys, so I actually was able to get that deal with Boston to go through. Uh, I ended up giving them Porter, Struble, a second and a third round pick um, in the 2033 draft. We had two second rounds, so I didn't mind giving it up. Uh, they did give us Jeremy Swimmin in exchange for that, so really happy with that. I think uh, his goaltending is going to be a big boost for us. In another small trade we just made, um, we sent... Uh, Valitenko and Pickeron into Florida in exchange for our second round pick back in this year's draft and Cheka, um, a defenseman who, you know, we can probably slot in if needed, um, but really mostly sent it in for the second round pick. Getting that back was important, so um, good pick on our end. And I don't think I'm going to make any more moves here. That in our trade for Swayman uh, was a huge trade for us. I think that'll help us down the line. All right, so the trade deadline is over. As you can see there, Nashville getting Minchikov from the Coyotes. Take a look. There's our trade for Cheka in our second. Getting that back was good. Um, Chandler Stevenson going to Carolina and Harris going to Philly. Um, let's see, Victor Olsson going to Tampa. Uh, lots of draft picks moving around here. Uh, Sean Dersey going to Calgary there for Anderson Fleury in a sixth. Uh, Dougie Hamilton there going to Toronto. Um, let's see, Biondi going to LA. There was our big trade for Swayman. Uh, I think that was probably so far looks like the biggest trade at deadline. Brock Besser there though, another big trade going to Washington. Um, McLeod going to Washington as well. Uh, Edmonton there getting a first round in Jamna from Toronto. Uh, pretty big trade there. Detroit getting Jake Bean. Let's see, anything else? Branchstein there going to Toronto. Uh, Pittsburgh also getting first and Magnuson from Tampa in exchange for Gru. Um, so yeah, honestly, I think our trade for Swimmin was the biggest one at the deadline. I think that's just going to help us so much on the goaltending front, getting an 89 overall goalie. Oh, not this. No, not this bug. I think I'm going to have to do all this over again because it doesn't save if this happens. I hate this. Yes, unfortunately, we're going to have to redo this, so you have to work that deal out with a... Uh, with Boston again. Oh, this game, man. My goodness. All right. We'll reload the game and everything and, you know, do what we got to do. All right, guys. So to finish the end of the regular season here, we make the playoffs a record of 45, 31, and 6. Good for 96 points. As you can see there, finished pretty strong, showing Jeremy Swayman was 100% a difference maker for us. Take a look at our team stats here. Caulfield absolutely popped off. 90 points. Uh, and then Isaac Howard here, putting up a good amount of points, proving that he was worth that big contract, 79 points. Jaeger and Lundell playing well for us as always, up and down the lineup. Really good numbers, even our defensemen, really good plus minus there, like plus 46, plus 43. Um, really, really nice there. And then take a look at our goalies here. Um, so Swayman, see how he did for us? Yeah, he went 12-5. Uh, 12 and 5, two shutouts with 0.923 and 2.42. 2 
goals again. So, so happy that we were able to pick him up at the deadline. Definitely a difference maker for us and probably the biggest reason that we got into the playoffs. I always forget to look at the rest of the league. Um, take a look at the stats here. Uh, Matthew's there. Jesus, 79 goals. That has to be like single season record or something. I'll have to check that um, after this, but that's absolute insanity. Um, take a look at defenseman here. Hughes probably going to win the Norris unless Sider gets it for the better plus minus. He might. And then McCarr, Darlene, and Theodore rounding it out with Fox there. Um, you know, all the guys you expect to see there. Costa leading with 47 wins, but Gustafson here. He went 46, 9, and 6. That's ridiculous. Uh, looks like he would be a lock to win the Vesna. Yeah. So Gustafson looks like a pretty strong lock to win the Vesna there. I'm curious to see how the Avalanche actually did this season. That must have been absolutely insane. Yeah, 128 points. 59, 13, and 10. Jesus. Um, and their HL team there also making the playoffs. They were 52, 24, and 6. Total 110 points. Looks like, I don't know, Griffin's actually beat him out by four points. So with some out here, see we get in the first round of the playoffs. Are playing the Carolina Hurricanes in the first round. They're very impressive, 53, 24, and five. Um, as usual, do you want to take a look at who they have on their team here? Um, see, they're all like generated guys, I think. Except Seth Jarvis there, uh, still a 90 overall. They have a really good team here. Bobby Brink there. Sylvian Lambert, oh my goodness, 21 R85. Yeah, they have a very, very good team here. Um, our defensive core, I think, is a little bit better. Honestly, Hughes is good, Haig's good as well, but overall, um, I think offensively, we're pretty well matched. Um, defensively, we're a bit better. And then 85 Primo in net, uh, but a 61 backing him up. So. I think defensively and goaltending wise we have the advantage but obviously anything can happen should be a good offensive matchup first two games here and we split those both going to overtime both 3-2 on the score next two games we get two wins there opportunity to close it out we can't do it we lose an OT a tough one and then we close it out there in game six we take care of the Hurricanes Take a look at the rest of the series there. Avalanche potentially could get out of the first round. Um, or they could be eliminated. Kraken eliminating the Oilers, Knights, and Wild also moving on. Everything in the East is set. Penguins, Lightning, and Red Wings as expected moving on. So we'll sim out here. See who we're playing in the second round. Our AHL team also moved on. And we'll see who we get. Alright, so we have the Pittsburgh Penguins here in the second round. Uh, the Avalanche did manage to move on in seven games. Let's take a look at this Pittsburgh team. See what they have going on here. Um, oh, that's like a really nasty first line. Felino, Heischer, and Gru there. I mean, they're just like a really well-rounded team, honestly. <laughs> uh, Marco Rossi there. That was that trade they made at the deadline. Looks like he's paying off for them. Um, defense, we're definitely better defense. They have a pretty good top pairing there, but otherwise, second pairings were definitely better. As for goalies, 82 Shesterkin, um, 36 years old, still really good, and then Popovich as their starter. So, I think goaltending, we have the better goalie, we have the better defense. Um, but again, like the Hurricanes, offensively pretty evenly matched. And it did show in the scores of that series. Um, so let's go here. First two games, we lose both of them. That's tough. Game three, we take a win there. Game four, down 3-1 in the series. This could be our season. Let's get into the sim here. Big first period, up 3-0. 4-2, head into the third. And we hold on for a game six, down 3-2 in the series. Headed back home. Literally backs to the wall here. Down 2 nothing. Felino getting both of their goals. Okay. Down 3 nothing. Pretty sure that's going to be all she wrote. We'll go to the third period here. Sim this. Uh, we get one early goal. Not done yet. Fighting back. 
Uh, time winding down about halfway through the third period here. Still down 3-1. Time is closing in here. Don't think we're going to have enough time to do it. Into two minutes here. And that's all she wrote for our season. Eliminated in six games by the Pittsburgh Penguins. Another disappointing end to our season. But hey, we got into the playoffs. Pretty decent run making it to the second round. Denisenko there, 15 points in 12 playoff games. Um, you know, overall, relatively good season. We picked it up at the end. Probably going to try and sign Jeremy Swimmon, but we'll sim the rest of the playoffs out here um, and then head into the draft. Alright, so after simming the end of the playoffs, obviously had that unfortunate second round exit to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Our Stanley Cup champions are the Detroit Red Wings, and the Calder Cup champions are the Syracuse Crunch here. Uh, we're headed out into the draft, uh, obviously getting to 20, 31, and 32. Um, we're going to have some retired players. You can see the draft lottery. Calgary jumping up from 4th to, to 1st. Ottawa getting screwed out of the first overall pick there, dropping to number 3. Um, you know, Columbus there getting an 8th and 10th pick, pretty lucky. Um, we will take a look at the retired players. Um, so yeah, some big names here, obviously. Drysaddle, Kucherov, Nylander, Barkhaus, Shifley, and Forsberg. Probably the biggest names there. You got Horvat, Ekblad there, Bjorkstrand, Monaghan. Like, uh, so many big names here. Lekin and Achushkin, the list goes on and on. Let's check the goalies. Um, Jari, Binnington, Merzlikens, and Vanacek. You also got Dreger and Vlade are there, so pretty big names on the goalie side. You start getting into a lot of generated guys. <laughs> Barco is now a coach. We could go out and try and get him as our head coach for the last couple of seasons here. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Um, we'll sim out to the draft, and here we go. Let's take a look uh, at the awards for this year. Uh, maybe we can take a look at, like, who led the league necessarily? Um, so I am pretty curious. Uh, so there, Matthew's killing it, 79 goals. Oh yeah, we did look at this because they had 79 goals. I figured like that had to be like some kind of some kind of record that I'll have to check at some point. Um, but let's look at the. Oh, so Detroit went back to back. Okay, very impressive there. Yeah, they had such a good team. Um, there you go, Matthews, Art Ross, and the Hart Hughes getting the Norris. Marner, Lady Bing, uh, Avalanche rookie, the Calder there, Raymond gets a Con Smythe, Gustafson there getting the Vesna, and the William Jennings, very interesting, took that from Kosa there, uh, Jackson with the Masterson, Chicago coach with the Jack Adams, Sebastian Aho still there on the Islanders, gets a Selkie, Matthews with the Ted Lindsay, and Maurice Richard, he just cleaned up like crazy this season. Um, we take a look at the playoff tree here, see Detroit's Road to the Cup, actually by Colorado in the finals, very interesting. Uh, they ended up sweeping Detroit, it's such a good run to the Cup there, obviously we made it out of the first round there against Carolina, but um, you know, unfortunate second round exit to the Pittsburgh Penguins, but still pretty good playoff appearance for us, uh, good record there, so solid season overall. Uh, we're going to start the draft here, uh, see the top five picks there with Calgary, Nashville, Ottawa, Philly, and New York. Um, I'm actually not sure about our draft board. Not sure we have a ton of picks here. Yeah, we don't. So first and second rounder, though, is fine, honestly. Um, obviously, everyone that we draft um, this year, most likely not going to play with the team as we only have two seasons after this one. Um, so let's see. An 82 medium elite. Nashville gets an 80. Medium elite, Ottawa here, 70 high top six, interesting. And Philly there, getting 80 elite, Ottawa, what are you doing? Um, and then 81 medium elite, so I honestly don't know what Ottawa's doing. Um, they got screwed out of that first overall pick, and they flubbed it. Let's so go our pick here, number 21, and see who we want to take. All right, guys, so I'm like Hunter Weiss is our first round pick here. He's projected to go 29th by our scouts. Central scouting him at 34th. Um, so technically like a very early second round pick here. Uh, but he had really good stats. He has really, you know, good skills here. Uh, small guy, but, you know, very good skater there. Two years ETA guaranteed there. And lots of chances for good X-Factors. So, 
we're gonna take him he looks like the best overall guy and yeah he is a low elite 70 overall and he does have those X factors so you know really solid pick again most likely not gonna be playing with us as we're almost done you know look at the skating stats absolutely insane the defensive stats you know shooting and puck skills are pretty impressive right off the bat um, but yeah likely not gonna play with us but still a pretty good pick We'll go to our second rounder here at number 51. All right, we're going to like Jay Yoshimura here. Um, has some pretty good skills. A shooting there projected um, to be a well, medium elite, I think. Yeah, medium elite, low though on the accuracy there, but pretty close to two years ETA. Looks pretty good. Obviously take him over the goalie. Like no sense in developing goalies at this stage. Um, and let's see, is it medium top nine? Like honestly could have been worse, but uh, he looks pretty decent. And then we'll go to our next pick here, not until number 115. Alright guys, so just on this guy projected to go 148, he has a 50-50 medium franchise. He's definitely not that, especially with 5 years ETA, but like, I feel like it's just, it would be funny if like he did end up, you know, being that. You also have this goalie, but, you know, again, I just feel like it would be funny to see what he turns out being. He's actually a medium elite, okay, so... <laughs> He's actually not terrible here. Uh, really low rated though at 52 overall, but still um, pretty funny that there was that kind of potential listed. And a medium elite in round four, honestly not the worst that could happen. We'll go to our next pick at number 181. All right, so obviously we're just kind of going down with the next highest rated guys. Project to go 210, we're at 181. 50-50 um, medium elite, probably not going to be that. My bit's like bottom 6 or even top 9, um, but we'll see. And medium top 9, so not the worst that could happen. But how do our next pick here at number 213? I believe this is our last pick of the draft. Here we have another guy, Isaiah Ali, medium elite, pretty low accuracy, guaranteed 5 years. Not terrible stats for here in the 7th round, pretty good um, numbers there. Uh, we'll take him, he's 18 years old. And he's a bottom six, so could have been better, but for the seventh round, what are you going to do? Um, and that's going to be the draft here. I uh, kind of wanted to zip through that. Only had five picks at the end of this, uh, you know, toward the end of the franchise series. We do have the resign phase. We don't have any huge decisions to make as far as contracts go. Um, you know, uh, several of our key guys we still have uh, until the end of this franchise series, so... We'll head out to the resign phase um, and see what we want to do. I honestly might put in an offer to Alexander Barkov, uh, see if we can't get him as our head coach for the last two years here. All right, so uh, we have to renew a couple contracts. I do want to renew Thomas Konechny here. He's been with us for so long. Like we got him pretty early in this franchise series. I really like him. He's 35, he's still an 84 overall. Like he's so good down on a third or fourth line. Uh, he's only asking for 2.85. I'm going to send him a year uh, at 2.5. We'll see what he says to this. All right, so we got Tarnquist here, and he's an extension. 26 years old, 84 overall. He's a really good defensive defenseman. We usually have him our first or second pairing. Um, I'm going to send him in two years at 6.25. He wants six years at 6.7. Obviously, we only need him for the next two years to finish out this franchise series. So we'll send this offer in and see what he says. As you can see, we've got $24.6 million in cap space. Uh, we don't need to go out and get a ton of players. So this will leave us with plenty of cap space to make some moves. All right, guys, so Jeremy Swayman's asking three years at 10.1. We only need him for two. He comes down to 10.05. Um... He's still an 89. He's not going to go down that much in rating at 33 years old. Um, I figured we could probably get away with it. I might send him an offer for like, you know, kind of come in a low ball, maybe do like 9.5 um, and see what he says to this. Um, but it's so much cap space. We do need a center. I feel like I might want to let him go to free agency, um, see who we can pick up then. Um, I feel like that's probably the better play here. So. Um, you know, we are going to let him go to free agency. Um, as you can see here, we have Armsden here as an 81 overall. Um, might go up, might not, but it is what it is. Regardless, uh, everything's looking good. We're going to have to go out, get a fourth line center for us. Um, left wings look good. Uh, I'm going to have to grab a couple right wingers, so not too much work to do here, um, but we'll see what happens. 
All right, so Tarquist says he wants to test the free agent market, but more cash could persuade me. That's okay, we came in pretty low. I'm going to raise my offer just a bit for him. All right, so Travis Konechny did accept. We got him for one year, bumped him up from 2.5 to 2.6 million, or 2.65, I believe. Um, still good to have him back for the, for the year. Um, again, such a good third or fourth liner for us. And then Tarquist did accept. We bumped him up from 6.5 to 6.6 .6 for the next two years. Pretty worth it in my opinion. He's still 26 years old, so, you know, he's been solid for us. Okay, so just realized Barkov wants a associate coach role. He actually puts pretty good coaching stats there. Amon is teaching Amon his coach influence. Um, good offensive, defensive coach here. Um, not like the best team fit, but again, as an associate coach, um, not the worst. So we're going to send him an offer here and see if we can get him in. Because also realize Roman Yossi here is available um, for a head coach position. Uh, has a pretty good team fit with some of our main guys here. I um, feel like it would be pretty cool. Uh, see if we can get him on board. So we're going to send him an offer and see what he says. Okay, so notice Gustafsson is actually a free agent this year. 34 years old, but still an 86 overall. Looks pretty good. He's asking for 5.7 million. Um, much better than, you know, Swayman's 10.4. Uh, Swimming's an 89, but still, I feel like, you know, we could lock this guy in. Um, he actually comes down, so, like, I wonder if we could just lock him in for the rest of this franchise. Maybe go, like, 5.5. Um, probably, like, a fair contract overpay. Or someone asking 4.6. We could probably go, like, eh, I don't know. Do, like, 5 million, I guess, for three years and see what he says to this. All right, guys, so Barkov did accept our offer. He's going to be our associate coach. Uh, for the next three seasons. <laughs> he doesn't really like the size of our market, but he's willing to live with it. Pretty cool that we got an NHLer on our coaching staff here. <laughs> and then guess Roman Yossi accepted our offer for a head coach uh, role with us. Uh, <laughs> it's honestly really cool. Uh, he's only rated as a B, but you know, going into the final couple of years, I think it's pretty cool to have a coaching staff full of uh, actual NHL guys, NHL legends really, you know, Yossi and Barkov at this point could be considered, you know, super, super great all-stars in the league. So really cool to have them join the team here in the last couple of seasons of this franchise series. All right, guys, so we signed Arthur Kalia for the duration of this franchise series. Really great winger, um, just really great offensive stats on him. He'll be a good addition for the team. We also signed Dante Fabro again through the duration of the rest of the franchise series for the next couple seasons. Awesome ad, he's such a good defenseman. Even at 34, I think he's still like an 84, 85 overall, so he's just so good. And there we go guys, Philip Gustafson accepts our offer the next three years at $5 million. Um, really awesome, you know, coming off of Vesna and Jennings Trophy win last season. Uh, he's so good, I think, I think that's going to make a big difference in our team headed into the next season. Alright guys, we have 5.8 million in cap space left. Still need a center. Philip Heedle here, 32 years old, 83 overall. Really good center. Uh, good two-way guy. Could easily be our fourth line center. Get him for the next uh, two years through the end of this franchise series. Send in 2.2 million. See what he says to this. And there we go. Heedle accepted our offer. Really great. He says thinks he can add a lot That's to a team that's destined for a good run in the playoffs. I agree. We got a super solid squad here holding on to pretty much every every player that was here last year. Um, so excited to have him join the team for the remainder two seasons that we have. All right, guys. So headed into the next season, the 2032-23 season. Um, this will be our second to last season with the Habs. Take a look at our lines here. The fact that Caulfield's still 93 is unreal. Uh, he's playing up there on the first line with Jaeger and Howard. Uh, I wish the chemistry overall would be a little better, but I feel like our overalls uh, across the lineup are really good. Um, second line, we got Kaliev, Lundell, and McRorty there. Third line, we have Denisenko, Velarde, and Konechny. And fourth line, we got McDonald here, who's 24 years old and 82 overall. Medium top six, like, looks like a pretty interesting player. Defensive stats are really weird. He's got great shot blocking and stick checking stats, but his defense awareness is not good. But like the rest of his stats are really interesting. Um, so we'll see how he does. And he's playing with Hedl and Othman. Um, and then we got on our defensive side, 
Broberg and Jirotek on that first pairing there. Really good first pairing, I love that. Second pairing, Fabro and Baron. Fabro actually went down from an 84 to an 82, which kind of sucks. But pairing him with Baron, they get a plus one. So not bad there for a second pairing. And down on the fourth pairing, we got Delorier, 21 years old, still room to grow. He's playing with Tarnquist to get plus one on that bottom pairing. So overall, really solid defensive core. Uh, take a look at our special teams. First unit, absolutely gross, plus five. Second unit has an even correlation, but you know, pretty stacked there. Lots of good passers and good shooters. Four man power play got a plus three and an even correlation. Penalty kill gets a plus one and even, you know, just really good penalty kills overall. Good defensive stats on all these guys. Uh, and three man PK got on at minus one. It's really the best I could do. I tried so many different pairings, but uh, even correlation on the second unit. Really good defensive stats. I'm not too concerned about them getting that minus one there. Uh, and then go take a look at our goalies. We got Gustafsson, 86 overall still. Arms didn't back him up. Went from an 81 to an 82. So really solid goaltending pairing this season. Um, you know, really happy with how this turned out. Uh, I think they're gonna, hopefully they do really well. You know, their overall say they could be difference makers for us, but you know, I really like the way this team looks. Uh, take a look at our captains here. Caulfield now the captain of the team with Jaeger and Landell as the two assistant captains. So well deserved on Caulfield. Uh, you know, <laughs> we did some big budgeting uh, and salary cap management to keep him on the team this whole time, but you know, really attached to him as the franchise player for this organization. So glad that we have kept him the entire franchise series. Well deserved and you know, we're just going to sim out here, obviously. We're headed into the next season, 2032, 2033. Again, we have one more season after this. So, winding down here to our time with the Habs. Um, it's been really fun with them. Hopefully, we can win a Stanley Cup. We had a good playoff run last season. Unfortunate second round exit. Hoping to get back to the Stanley Cup Finals and hopefully win one in our final two seasons here. So, as always, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. The support helps me out a ton, and we are almost at 200 subscribers, guys. That's absolutely insane, considering that just a few months ago, I was at 27 subscribers when I started these Franchise Mode series. Um, so the support has been awesome. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the videos. Uh, I'll definitely be continuing these in NHL 23. But until then, we still have a couple more episodes with the Habs here. We'll dive into the 2032-2033 season next time. Until then, have a good one, y'all.